in terms of Sharon Tate, for me, she feels like the kind of light and optimism um, in terms of if she's a kind of theme around this film. For you, when you were approached and asked to play her, where did you start with her? Uh, it was very clear in the way that Quentin had, had written her that she really was more of a presence throughout the film and very much to bring, like you said, that hope, that optimism, the light, kind of show the, the wonderful parts of Hollywood in 1969. Um, and for you, sir, I think that one thing that people forget about Mr. Tarantino is he's an extraordinary director, but he's also an exceptional writer. And I wanted to ask what your response was when you first read the script and what it was that tipped you over to say yes to play Cliff. Well, first of all, when Tarantino calls, everyone says yes. No question. <laughs> okay. But on the immediate read, it's, it's pretty... He, it's, it's so specific, his writing. It's, it's pretty um, evident what... The shape, the flavor, the tone of the thing. Yeah. So it's, it's automatic. He makes it really easy for us. And Leo, for you, in terms of this character, there's so many layers to him and so many parts that you have to play as an actor. It's a film within a film. It's all that kind of stuff. Does he encourage you to kind of bring as much of it yourself to the table as what's on the script? I, I would say a combination of both. The amazing thing about getting to work with Quentin is all the reference that he gives you, not only from... His own, from history, from his own imagination, but actually getting to watch films. I mean, it's truly an educational process. He's one of the most unique visionary filmmakers of our time, and his ability to combine, you know, fairy tales with reality is is nobody else does it like him. So, the the, the whole process of of, of creating these characters and the, all that reference is what makes the uh, the film ultimately an in incredibly enjoyable experience. How would you describe being on set of a Quentin Tarantino film? Because I've spoken to producers, some of your other castmates here as well tonight, and it feels like such a kind of family environment in terms of all teamwork. Is that how you would describe it? It is. I mean, so many of the crew members that, are, that you work with on the set have worked with Quentin since, you know, Marty's worked with him since Reservoir Dogs. So, I mean, there, there really is a community and family feel there and they all have in-jokes. And then anyone welcome to that family for the first time is immediately, you know, feel, feels a part of it. It's, it's fun and he always plays music. And, On um, set? Yeah, 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 yeah. Was, yeah. So, um, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Does anyone else get to pick the music or is it just Quentin that gets to choose the music? There's no need to step in. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, a good, he's pretty good at it. Yeah, yeah he, can pick a, he can pick a tune. Um, what was your reaction when you f saw the film finished for the first time? Um, I mean, pleased as punch. You know, Tarantino always brings something fresh and something new and very unique. And what I most love about this one that I, I didn't understand during shooting, it, it really feels like a confluence of all his work. There's a little bit of all his previous work in this and it's thread, threaded really beautifully. Yeah. And Leo, in terms of, of for you for this character, what was the, the preparation that you did? I believe that you kind of stepped into the world of a particular TV star that, was, that Quentin was a big fan of. Yeah, as Brad was saying, it's really an homage or a love story to the industry. And, you know, Brad and I in this film play characters that are sort of voyeuristic. We're, the culture has left us behind, the industry has left us behind, and we're watching the, the changing of the guard, so to speak. So it was, it was interesting to, to not only to step into this time period, but to play two guys that are sort of on the outskirts, trying to fight, trying to still survive within a, the, the industry that they love. But it really is a, a love letter to Hollywood and Los Angeles. What's the biggest reward for you about now this film is hitting cinemas, people are getting the chance to see it? God, that's a really good question. You know, I've had this movie in my head for about six years. So there's certain shots, like for instance, like the final shot in the movie, I've had it in my head for six years. Wow. So to actually get it out of my head, <laughs> get it on celluloid, and then have people respond to it the way they did, uh, the way they do, is, uh, uh, is pretty incredible. It's, 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 it's a fun experience to be me at this moment. When you have these two actors that are kind of almost a bit like old school Hollywood yeah, yeah. with Leo and, and Brad, you want that chemistry to work, but you don't, do you know before you start rolling the camera if it is? Because it's pretty special to watch. Well, you know, I, I mean, that's interesting what you're saying, actually. I've never had, uh, I think sometimes, maybe when it's 
a, a girl and a guy, and it's got to be a romantic movie. They'll have a chemistry kind of thing. I've never done anything like that because I just figure if somebody's a really terrific actor. They're, they can they're, pretend. They're going to be. They're going to be <laughs> terrific, and it's all going to work out. I mean, I don't remember like uh, bending over backwards to put Margaret Qualley. Quali in in the scene with uh, uh, Brad before I cast her, I just kind of figured it was all going to work out, and that was the yeah. case with with, with uh, all our examples right now. They were just <laughs> terrific. Why did you want to tell this story? Because I know it's a personal thing for you. You grew up in yeah, you know yeah, uh -huh. in Hollywood, and this was part of your world. But why did you want to tell this story? Well, it's interesting. It was just, I, I, I did like the idea of dealing with the town back in 1969. And I do have a memory of what it was like then. I mean, it's more of a memory piece than uh, journalistic reporting. All right, but uh, um, I did have that. And then also, I did like the idea of making a movie about Hollywood. And then uh, about a time in Hollywood that uh, has, it's now been enough time that <laughs> There's not that many people who remember it that much anymore. I mean, if I did this movie 10 years earlier, most of the critics would have even be from that time period. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of not the case now. And um, so I, that actually makes it a really, really interesting thing. But I, I did always have it in my mind about at some point I would do a, a movie about Hollywood, a movie about making movies. Was it easy to write? Uh, well, yeah, it kind of was. I mean, once I get going on my scripts, they all become easy to write. I mean, the problem, though, is <laughs> I usually write way too much. All right, so I have to figure out what I can lose. I mean, I'm constantly in a situation where I write a script that's closer to a novel than it is a script. Well, was this not going to start off as a novel? Well, it, 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 yeah, there's like, I've got the first three chapters written for the novel right now, frankly. Right. You know, but the thing is, I usually write these big, unwieldy novels, and then... Uh, I adapt them into the movie in editing. This is a really exciting film, so it's good fun. It's Tarantino, you know? You know, he's always bringing something fresh. It's just good fun. Yeah, he's the real deal. It's very, very exciting. It's wonderful to be here at this, uh, this home of all the, uh, the big events and such a creative, creative hub. Um, and it's, it's, it's wonderful to be here for such a special event and surrounded by these beautiful, creative minds that brought this story to life. It's everything you can imagine. It's been absolutely outstanding. And um, I gotta tell you, it's, it's, uh, he, he doesn't stop to think about how to make the story better. A lot of writers, they kind of are very precious about the words because you can understand they've been thinking about it for a long time. But Quentin continues to to write and rewrite and rewrite till the very end and to, uh, continues to make the story better, which is absolutely outstanding. It's 1960s Los Angeles. It's a, it's a very transitional period for uh, Los Angeles as a, as a county and also for the world of filmmaking. So to be able to see that and to be able to see what our industry has been going through is quite a, quite a special affair. We're at Leicester Square. Uh, at the premiere of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino's ninth movie. It was absolutely fantastic working with Quentin. He's a uh, passionate student of film and is just happy to talk about movies endlessly without, uh, without ego. Uh, and, and he's just happy to find anyone that will talk about them with him. No one knows as much about movies as he does. That countercultural moment in California, uh, I don't, I think whatever age you are, I think everyone's aware of the, the rise of the hippie culture, acid culture, free love. And this movie sits perfectly at the intersection of a old fashioned, old school, sort of brill creamed pompadour wearing uh, matinee idol as, as, as this new kind of grittier, dirtier uh, countercultural movement seeped into the world and you know in hollywood and la obviously he's but he's used that as a prism to tell the story so i just think it's a very interesting it point in history we did this film uh, as a passion project and and it's been the culmination of many years of quentin tarantino envisioning this world and this time period and created these amazing characters and we don't get to see films like this very often Mr. Tarantino always makes this incredible mosaic tapestry of things that uh, rely on historical fact, but also fairy tale. He's one of the most singular, unique voices in the in, 
in the cinematic world right now. And anytime he calls, you know he's going to be doing something incredibly unique. I'm just, a prou I'm just proud to be, uh, you know, of service to him. We had this incredible backstory to our characters. We got to literally sit with Quentin and talk about the history of who these two men were. And to be able to work with somebody like Brad and fill these shoes of these characters that we kind of implicitly knew, having grown up in Los Angeles in this industry, we knew these relationships. He just makes it so incredibly fun and he, and he gives you so many reference points as an actor and so much so many films to watch, so much history to look at. It, it, it's, a, it's an absolute joy on set every day. He's an incredible actor. He's an, so easy to work with and we so f fit naturally into these characters. We kind of knew who these guys were implicitly. We're at Leicester Square for the premiere of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and um, the rain stopped, <laughs> so it's great. But uh, no, it's, it's fun and it's exciting. Can't wait for people to see the movie. I can't remember a time I've ever felt so transported. Like it, he's really kind of created a, a time capsule for everyone, and it's 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 pretty wild. It's fun. It was amazing. He just so clearly loves being on film sets, and um, his energy is kind of infectious. So it was just such a fun time, and I've always wanted to see him work. So yeah, I loved it. Working with Quentin Tarantino is not even a dream you ever dare to have. You just think like that's one of the most amazing filmmakers who's ever lived and will ever live and I'm not going to have the chance to work with that person so I'll just watch. So when it came up it's obviously as an actor an honor, as a director it's incredible to watch him and learn and I have to say that I've really thought about the way he operates his set. It's about a time in American history, in cinematic history, where there's so much myth and he brings so much life and humor and love to the story and it's his most tender film and his most glamorous film and it's just an honor to be a part of it. Being there, it was like the closest I'll ever come to time traveling. Everything was completely of the period and I don't think I'll ever have an experience like that again. We are here in London right now in basically the most happening place I've ever been. I've been in um, the UK for three months now working on a new television show. And I have to say I've had some amazing experiences, but this may be the highlight. Making this film was such an incredible experience, living in Los Angeles, working with Quentin in his hometown. Um, it was spectacular, uh, one of the great experiences of my career. But it's lovely to be back home with family and friends and share the film with them. Really proud of it and uh, grateful for the experience. He has such confidence and such ease about him. You know, he, he is a master filmmaker and he knows exactly what he wants and how he wants to go about getting it. He doesn't create through pain, he creates through pleasure. He has a great appreciation and love of cinema and of the fact that he gets to do what he gets to do on the scale that he gets to do it. And so there's not a day goes by that we don't, um, you know, so he doesn't and the crew doesn't sort of acknowledge how lucky we are to be doing what we're doing. In fact, you know, when he's doing one more take, sometimes he says we're going to do one more and he says why and then he and he leads the crew in this sort of in this mantra which is why because we love making movies and that's the spirit that infuses every day i'm after experiences and working with the very best and you know i've been very fortunate to do that in my career and to work with quentin my goodness that's icing on the cake quentin tarantino two actors three actors at the peak of their power um, an incredible cast beyond that, uh, a great story. It combines all the things that we love in Tarantino. It's thrilling, it's funny as all hell, and which, what I think makes this very special, it's incredibly moving. Uh, for me, it's his most personal and uh, his most moving film. This is one of Quentin's most mature work. It's a very personal story to him, and I think you can tell Every inch of the movie is filled with love um, from him and all our craftspeople, and it's uh, it's a love story to Hollywood and uh, in a time that's not necessarily always celebrated. And it's pretty remarkable. He's wonderful. I've worked with him for about 25 years now in different capacities, and his infect his infectious enthusiasm is amazing and lovely, kind, caring man. And 
he's an auteur, he's a genius. He has a story to tell and um, he tells them well. Recreating 1969 was, it was quite frightening, but quite wonderful to see it come to fruition and a lot of hard work, dedication, getting a lot of people to sign off and allowing us to shut down the street and to recreate the storefronts and all of that. So it's pretty magnificent. Hi guys, here's today's daily fact. There are many celebrities who before multi-million earning careers worked just as you and me. Madonna at Dunkin Donuts, the owner of Amazon and McDonald's and so on. But actor Brad Pitt used to promote chicken sandwiches in a full chicken suit right on Sunset Boulevard. Remember to click here below to subscribe or on the side for more great content.